donor advised funds are this kudzu that's eating up the world of charitable giving. I'm Alan Cantor. I've developed a peculiar expertise in donor advised funds. Donor advised funds are these entities that live in a gray zone in between private foundations and regular, what we think of as public charities. And it provides them with a lot of tax advantages and a lot of flexibility. You'd have to go back to um, 1969 to understand how donor advised funds developed. So Congress in the 1969 Tax Act said there are two kinds of charities. There's public charities, a soup kitchen or a school or a hospital. We trust them and they can do kind of what they want. And there are private foundations and we're going to watch them like a hawk, like the Ford Foundation or the Rockefeller Foundation. They developed a lot of rules specifically for private foundations. A, we have to know everything that happens. There has to be full transparency. B, you have to give out at least 5% of your assets every year to actual public charities. See, you're going to have a lower uh, tax advantage. So what's happened in the you know 50 years since is that donor advised funds have grown into this strange hybrid. They give the donors essentially the kind of control they have they would have in a private foundation with none of the transparency and none of the requirements for distribution. Donor advised funds are really attractive to donors. They can get their full charitable deduction upfront, but there's no requirement that they ever have to give the money out in a given year or ever. We're losing the charitable giving of some of the people who are most capable of giving large gifts because it's going into these entities and it's staying there. So let's imagine that you're a donor and you bought a house on Lake Tahoe in 1962 for hundred thousand dollars. It's now worth five million dollars and you want to create a charitable entity that you can make charitable gifts from. If you put that into a private foundation, the only tax deduction you would get would be the hundred thousand dollars that you paid for over 50 years ago. If you put it into a donor advised fund, you would actually get a $5 million charitable deduction because it's considered part of the public charity that technically controls the donor advised fund. 95, 98, 99% of donor advised fund uh, donors are good people who are making grants in a good way, but there are people who are using this to hide their identity and to fund controversial causes. There's more and more money going into donor advised funds uh, there's less and less money going to soup kitchens, boys and girls clubs, hospitals, schools, places that are actually providing services. I've worked my whole career in the nonprofit world and we need to acknowledge that, the, that there's a power imbalance. There are the organizations that need money and there are the individuals and institutions that have money. And right now, nonprofits are grinding their teeth because they are really concerned about the growth and lack of regulation around donor advised funds, but they are reluctant to speak up because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them.